Yo, let's go and welcome to the video. Wanted to do some quick tips on the changes to SSC and TK boss by boss. So, starting off with LR, uh, positioning wise, we used to stand straight back so that if he went to the left or the right, we could go to either side, but now we know he's going to go to the right, so we can stand off to the side a little bit. And once he does go to the second platform, all we have to do is turn. We don't need to run at all. We can reach him from both platforms in one spot and then reposition ourselves as needed while we re up Moonfire and Fairy Fire so we're ready for the next platform. We only had him move one, two, three times and he was dead. I don't know where he moves after that. Does he come back to the first platform that he was at or go counterclockwise? So hopefully, you guys are killing him quick enough to where you know, it's only two, maybe three platform rotations. After that, the fight seemed to be pretty much the same. Void Reaver, exactly the same. Nothing really changed. He just died quicker because he has less health. So for High Astromancer, these adds that come when she fades, they die even quicker than they used to. So getting Hurricane off ASAP is going to help your overall damage look good. If you're late on Hurricane, then it's going to really reflect compared to all the other bumpkin parses. But her debuff she puts on people, instead of going to a soak group, you're just going to run out of the raid away from everybody. And if you're, anyone's near you, after a couple seconds, they're going to explode up into the air with you. So we had it where one of our people, they got Mark Skull from Deadly Boss Mods. I wasn't paying attention that they didn't run out, so neither were a lot of other people. So even like trying to switch to cat form is still too much fall damage. So if you get that debuff, move out. <laughs> Other than that, boss is pretty much the same. So for KT, everything's health is super low now, so it's hard to get these guys in position because they just melt so fast. That's Thaladred with 50% before he's even really off the platform. So watching DPS is going to be an issue for some people unless there comes a point where it doesn't really matter where they die. So all their mechanics are still the same. They just melt really fast. So phase two with the weapons is a long waiting game. It used to be in 25, maybe 30 seconds after you kill them to equip it and get in position. Now it's like 45 seconds, maybe a minute, you know, next week that you'll have of downtime because they just go down so quickly. So it gives you more time to, you know, find your weapon, the staff, pick it up, put the weapon oil, and if you really want to min-max and get that parse for KT, you got to enchant it with at least 40 spell power. And that's aren't too crazy. I've done it a couple times. The crit numbers are just insane with that staff and like an enchant and oil on it. So for KT himself, we didn't kill any of the phoenixes. We didn't worry about them. Like when they died, we didn't kill the eggs or anything for the first phase. We waited until he got to 50% and like despawned for a minute and then killed the, the phoenixes that we did have left and the eggs at that point. But other than that, like the strategy for us was pretty pretty much the same. So right after he comes back for the gravity lapse even, he popped heroism, popped everything. So he was already almost down to 40% before the gravity lapse even knocked us up into the air. So it's really quick after you get to that point. His last phase, we only had you know the one gravity lapse. So the fight used to take like 14 minutes, like way back in the day. Then we got it down to you know like 12, maybe like 11 minutes, and now it's like an eight-minute fight overall. So a lot quicker. Uh, might be able to use more Destro bots on this. I think I used to only use one at the very beginning. So now we might be able to mix in like a second Destro bot instead of mana pots. And I think that's going to be true for like all of the bosses at this point. It just go down so much faster that if you did have to use all mana you can definitely start to transition to Destro Pots. If you did use you know one Destro Pot, one mana pot, you should be able to now use two two Destro Pots now instead. And so Bash phase one, exactly the same. We tanked her in the middle instead of you know kiting her from the pipe. Might be able to get like a couple extra percentage though now that her health is a little lower. If you did do the pipe strat, not too big of a deal though, because she dies so quickly after the generators are down that having that extra maybe five percent, it doesn't really matter anymore. But the the striders and elites do die a lot faster 
So even if you miss like a tainted or two, I think we missed two or three, it doesn't make that much difference anymore. Like the you're not going to run into really having a problem of too many elites or striders up. So once that last generator gets clicked, try to stay spread. It's a lot easier, I feel like, to get in position. You don't need to really worry about dropping thorning seeds anymore. I just pop heroism and burn her down. She only got maybe three uh, like poison cloud things dropped, so didn't have to reposition her nearly as much. Not that many people really died from the poison clouds, if anybody at all. So we went out of order and actually went to her first. So you can see she's like 10% and there's only three or four like poison clouds on the ground. She just dies so fast that those don't really matter nearly as much anymore. All right, Lurker, not much has changed. Uh, if you do jump into the water because of the spout or something, it, the damage you take is a lot less. It's only, I think, 500 a tick now. So you can kind of sit in there, hang out, wait until you use like a moon fire to hop back up so you're on the global cooldown. Uh, if you get more than one submerge phase, then that's when the DPS and the parse is going to go down. So hopefully it only takes you, you know, one submerge phase. There might be guilds out there that can do it before one submerge phase at this point. So they're the ones that are going to be like the 98, 99, 100 parsers. But you should still be able to get uh, a really nice DPS even with, you know, one submerge. Hydros has always been one of the faster fights. I think it's going to be kind of like Lurker, where if you have more than one transition, uh, it's when your DPS is gonna drop off a lot and I, I feel like at this point some guilds can probably do it without even having to transition we just didn't have the tanks with the right gear or tank dc so we did have to do like just one transition water tomb is still a thing unfortunately and i got hit with that but the the ads during the transition die a lot faster so you know, having to cc the ads and stuff like that you shouldn't have to worry about they can really just get cleaved down at this point so I just left the ads alone and just continued to DPS on the boss. So Leo, mechanic-wise, pretty much the same. Everything just dies faster. So it's still Whirlwind, still has the shade things that only you can attack. But, you know, the Whirlwind, I feel like, isn't doing that much damage that it used to do, as, long, like, as well as the bleed. So I tried to not worry about it in the past and just, you know, take the damage. And now it's it's really, you don't, you shouldn't really have to worry about it. So Tidewalker... The main thing is just trying to get any damage on the Murlocs that you can, so casting Hurricane early uh, should help to get at least a couple of the damage ticks off on them before they just die. There's still watery graves, uh, still the water bubbles at the end of the fight at 30%. Don't have to kite as much at the end because he's dying a lot faster now. Other than that, it's the same fight. Fathom Lord's the same fight. The tornadoes are still in there. Uh, that's the worst thing that I think in like all the raids is those tornadoes and having to dodge them. Uh, and I think this is probably now the hardest boss fight out of SSC and TK. If you think there's a different boss that's harder, let me know. Because this one, maybe we just struggled on. Uh, the spore bats were getting loose and killing people. You know, they might die quick, but... The damage that the spore bats do still hurts people. And, you know, we did have a lot of deaths on this fight. Maybe it was just a sloppy attempt. So it just didn't seem like the fight was shorter on this one. But the strategy was still the same. Tank the boss, then two adds down below, and have the caster add tanked in the back of the room. And kill the two adds, and then kill Fathom Lord. So no, no real big changes here on this fight. So that's it with the changes I could think of that I did. Not many. Only like one or two things maybe on each fight, if at all. The main thing is just that they die faster and we should be able to use more Destro bots now. Uh, if you noticed any other changes that you did that helped you out, leave them down below. Been having a lot of conversations about phase three gear uh, over on Discord. So if you'd like to join in that conversation or see what we've been talking about, definitely join. Uh, links in the description and I'll see you all later.